Hello and welcome to another AMA with Bumper. Joining us today is Gareth Ward, the COO. Gareth, great to have you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks for having me, Leia. Yeah, of course. Um, I've been learning a lot about Bumper and I'm always fascinated by how it just solves a really key issue in the space, volatility. But it's better to hear it from you, of course. So tell me about your role and how it plays into everything that's going on with Bumper. Yeah, so um, essentially I'm, I'm the COO and um, co-founder with Jonathan of Bumper. Um, we essentially, um, you know, kind of looked at the, the space in DeFi and, and looked for, you know, where there were pinch points, where there was a lack of innovation. Um, and we kind of worked out that, you know, there's this idea of uh, price protection. So if we could um, somehow create a system which a user could simply, you know, purchase a policy that could protect the value of their assets, then, um, and that we could somehow protect that, then that removes a huge amount of volatility and stress um, that they have to deal with. And from a user's perspective, it, it just seemed a no-brainer that we need to try to try to work on this. So it's certainly definitely um, a nice, simple idea, but mm -hmm. extremely complicated and difficult to execute. Yeah, absolutely. Getting that right is very, very difficult. I was also speaking with your CTO and it's hard just to keep up with all the intricacies that go in behind the scenes. Um, but on a personal level, how did you arrive at Bumper? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm from creative industries backgrounds, so advertising and stuff, um, hence the the beard, which seems synonymous with that industry. Um, and I've had businesses throughout, um, but been in, you know, crypto for quite a few years now. Uh, met Jonathan a little bit into that time. And um, we started talking about uh, a particular kind of niche part of the market. And then kind of an idea came up with that. And we, we kind of created Index, um, IDX. And out of that, we, you know, that was quite a, a um, exciting time and it was very uh, challenging and more so to do with um, regulations. We also went into the bear market, which was pretty hard. Um, but just, you know, we found that regulations really stifled that kind of innovation. And um, what we realised is that um, with the DeFi move, and we were quite early in spotting spotting DeFi and how much it could do, um, that it really captured a, a market and um, and it captured innovation as well, which is really important. Finance industry's been lacking that for many years. So, um, and we found that, um, you know, um, and again, it goes back to that. We, we kind of looked at where the pinch points were. So it's kind of evolved from, um, you know, just kind of meeting as crypto enthusiasts to building a business and pivoting and moving into a, a whole new business. Um, and that's kind of where I am. Um, as far as COO, I mean, that's kind of um, almost a tie time. I mean, John and myself are co-founders, so we work on the business yeah. together. All the crucial decisions are made together. Um, and we, we have a nice balance, you know, between us. Um, our, my strengths and, and his strengths seem to complement each other. Um, and to be honest, we probably spend more time together yeah. than than our wives, <laughs> family <laughs> at this point. So, but it's turned out a very strong partnership. So, yeah, it absolutely happens. Um, you, you, your work lives just end up just totally integrating into one another. Um, but that's what it is, I guess, you know, when, when you're building something, um, building something like this. But tell me about the process for actually building Bumper. This was quite rigorous. I mean, obviously, um, it's concepting first. So it's Jonathan and myself doing a lot of late night calls uh, for hours on end, just spitballing ideas and trying to really um, understand the market space and what we think kind of is has has room to explore further. And when we finally hit that kind of idea of um, it was either uh, actually over collateralized loans, we thought we could solve for that. Um, that could bring down the level of over collateralization needed for for CDPs and um, bring that down uh, from 150% down to kind of 105 or something like that. So um, we then um, 
approached a team um, that uh, basically we had some experts, some crypto economic experts and stuff there that could help us explore that idea and build that out. So we went into what's called the design and scoping phase. And from there, that's that's where we, we met Sam and he really um, took it another step. And what we really developed, what came out of it was that the fundamental thing we were trying to solve for was slippage. And out of that, we built a protection protocol, um, which is far greater than the initial um, kind of concept, which often happens. But then we went into, um, a, after that design and scoping phase, we went into, uh, we started building. We then raised more funds and um, that seemed to be very well received in the marketplace. Um, and after that, we after the kind of uh, initial build where we released the LP program where liquidity providers can, you know, deposit USDC and earn bump tokens as a farming or they can buy some. Um, we then go into another kind of DSP stage to try to really refine our next stage of the build. Um, and all the while we're doing agent-based modeling as well to kind of refine the parameters and make sure that we've got all the settings for the protocol right. And we've kind of gained that out properly. So um, th those are the kind of main parts. And then at the end of a build, you go into an audit phase where it's a security audit of all the contracts. And that's pretty important. You know, it's, it's a hacker's dream, the DeFi world. So we've got to do everything we can to make sure that the, s the smart contracts are, mm. are, um, are tight and secure and um, that there aren't any fundamental economic flaws as well. Yeah, that DeFi world is an absolute hacker's dream, the way you, the way you put it like that. Um, rug pulls after rug pulls, you know, you really have to um, pay a lot of attention and make sure that everything is just done right. Um, but speaking of, um, you know, tokens and everything like that, I know that you guys have been working um, quite a while and spending a lot of time on getting those tokenomics right. So tell me about the um, bumpernomics, I, th I think that's how you call it. Tell me about them. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's one of Jonathan's little coin terms. He likes kind of doing that um, and kind of you know stamping stamping uh, the bumper name where he can. Um, yeah, it's it's a tricky thing um, to work out um, and anticipate because essentially what you're also trying to do with tokenomics is you're trying to value the business. So in the early stages, you need to be realistic in your valuation. Um, and VCs won't necessarily invest if it's overvalued. Um, so they're looking at a kind of range. But at the same time, you're also trying to predict for, um, you know, future value of the token and be mindful of that. Um, so then there are a whole bunch of things. You've got to make sure that, you know, all the key people are, uh, incentivized that you have enough for strategic partners and all that kind of thing um, and that there's enough liquidity there um, to to be able to use for the protocol itself because it, it is a key um, a bump token is used in the protocol um, throughout so we've got to make sure there's enough there um, so that we can utilize that but enough to also incentivize every everyone that we need and sell some for VCs yeah of course so you mentioned that it's um, a key component of the protocol. Explain to me how, where does this value come from? Um, you know, what, what does it do? Yeah, so um, the so we have like makers and takers. Takers are people who are taking out protection and makers are the liquidity providers providing that kind of stable coin asset, which helps um, support the, the protocol. So to encourage them, they can, uh, you know, stake, bump, and earn um, bump tokens through through that staking. Um, we we also um, you know have this LP program, which we've kind of explained. That's a little bit more of a um, a um, an injected amount of um, tokens for farming and buying. Uh, it's kind of an option to buy there, uh, which is is to kind of kickstart the the maker side of the protocol. And but what tokenization is a really um, I mean that's the key to crypto right so it's it's kind of a fundamental um, consideration and what we found over the years is that there's 
a lot of you know uh, crypto projects probably didn't need any tokens you know they just it was a way of fundraising more than anything the actual token yeah, didn't absolutely. really serve a great lot of a lot of purpose um and so what you know what what kind of we've really looked at is that kind of fundamental um consideration different mm. from the traditional world where you have shareholders that are different to the users so the shareholders themselves um are there to make money from their investment and profit um and so their view of the business is very different to someone who's using the business um and not necessarily profiting so what that creates is discrepancy in that kind of um that kind of uh the extraction of that that uh, economy and so of that profit and so what we're very mindful of is is where that lies with us so what we're mm. trying to constantly do is align the bump token uh, and the value of that bump token uh between the users and and um the holders so the token holders um use the protocol if you want to use the protocol you have to have the token so you're now aligning the users with the shareholders mm-hmm. um as it were for lack of a better word um and that makes for a really strong strong protocol because now um you've you know through other things that we do because we use the bump token as a mechanism to help balance the protocol so there's some technical aspects to it um but it basically becomes the kind of oil you know in the engine that that's absolutely critical and so you know um for a user to drive the car they need to have oil in that engine and for the engine to work it needs to have oil so it it kind of becomes this um um key component to making sure that everyone is on the same page yeah i even think just on the user side of things um users often get um suspicious you know if there's no real use case um like you said a lot of people just have a token for the sake of having a token to raise money um without real fundamental Absolutely. value behind it yeah so yeah, i think you know and rightfully so rightfully <laughs> yeah absolutely so. yeah no i th- i think everyone um has been burnt um yeah. you know f- by that over the years i've certainly um invested in plenty of projects that i was really positive about the project but actually the reality was that the token didn't really serve much purpose they could have just you know um you know taken money and and just given yeah. out dividends or something like that you know so yeah for sure yeah it's for me it's such a red flag um and i i always tell you know new people getting into the space as well I'm always just like you know if there's no real value behind something then you know best to just stay away from it um but anyway your team is um pretty lean isn't it um so tell me about the structure and how you actually see that changing as bumper grows yeah so we always talk about this kind of you know the fever tree model which is a really good company that um that has very few people and you know really incentivize them really well and they kind of best in class and that. So we try to work towards that model and and we've got some really top people in our in our team. So primarily there's kind of the the the, the four main people in that. There's Jonathan myself, Sam and, and Jason our CMO. And um and and really, you know, f- what we're trying to do is not build out a team in a really fast way we want to get the right people um for the right job and that they can take on a lot more so they can be strategic they can uh manage teams they can but they can also get their hands dirty and actually are technically very very sound at doing that so that's quite key for us um and you know it it, it is tricky because i mean we've been through that process where we uh grew a team really fast and you know we had like over 30 people and it just doesn't work because if you don't have the structure of the of the business as you're growing um your business model is 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 evolving uh, at the correct rate um then you just get overwhelmed and people don't get tasked very well and they you know um you tend not to get um those kind of autonomous people you know that um that you know can kind of drive the business drive their own job and create their own role mm. um so and, and we've had got added difficulties you know as well because we we work over you know a couple of different countries you know so we've got everyone from you know 
um, Australia, UK, India. We've got um, partners in in the states um, and other parts of Europe. So, you know, it's it's tricky. You know, thankfully everyone's into remote working now, so it, it becomes easy. But the big thing is just um, making sure that we're always there. Are lots of touch points between the kind of co-founders that we're having these strategic discussions. We're constantly reviewing the business and looking at. Where do we go from here? Are we doing the right thing? Constantly kind of um, measuring those risks. Yeah, it's so important, you know, especially as the space just evolves, it grows. Um, it's always very, very important, you know, to have those conversations. And speaking of that, given that, you know, this area is so... Um, I, um, niche isn't the word it, it's more the word is more important you know helping protect people against volatility is obviously really important it's obviously um very um something that people are going to be very attracted to so naturally there are going to be more competitors that come along when you have these meetings how do you guys plan to actually remain um leaders in this area and um keep that competitive edge yeah we uh, i mean we were Kind of first to see the opportunity, um, yeah. you know, where the where the market lacked that innovation, and um, there weren't really any competitors. There are competitors coming through. They do offer a slightly different. Um, they're kind of taking a traditional mechanism and just putting it in in crypto. And what we've done is kind of taken it the next step. So that that kind of. Um, what that means is that essentially we've we've really utilized the harness the the DeFi aspect to yeah. solve for the problem and not just simply try to translate an existing mechanism into the crypto space. Um, it's certainly something we keep on top of who's out there and what they're doing, their timelines, who they're partnered with and whatnot. Um, it's something that is just a, a ever grow, a, ever growing uh, space, but one that we kind of keep an eye on, you know, quite regularly. And then through that, we look at their offering, we assess our own, um, we look at where we're doing it right and where we we could be better and we could sharpen ourselves. And I think that's the beauty of competition. It's a big space. It's a big growing market. So there is space and room for different um, you know, competitors in the market, and we certainly welcome it um, yeah. because we're always keen. You know, it's about building the product, and at the end of the day, the product has to be user centric. So it's got to be something that the users want to want to use. Uh, it's easy to use, um, and it's uh, it's clear. And we don't have to um, try to reinvent the wheel or educate. Um, necessarily to get users into a world that is complicated. We want to bring that complicated world and put a, a really simple face on it so that not just your kind of DeFi DGENs are, are playing <laughs> in it, but it's like your everyday person. And we, Jonathan and myself, we've always been like that where we, we kind of build the products for ourselves. You know, we're, we're pretty technical and we, we find our way around crypto quite comfortably. Um, but we still, uh, you, you know, we're not personally like coder kind of hacker kind of level of, of technical. So we really like good user experiences. And we like um, where, where, you know, a complicated thing has been simplified to, to, to allow the users to, to um, engage with that protocol and understand it really simply. I mean, half the time you turn up to these websites, these crypto websites, and you read the the, the spiel, the, the kind of paragraph there, and I don't know what they do. I've got to kind of work out what, because it's all the same terms. It's all the same lingo. Yeah. Um, you know, you come to ours, it's price protection. Simple as that. Yeah. You protect your the value of your assets. Simple. Yeah, that is um, something which really bothers me because <laughs> I'm always interviewing different companies, protocols, projects, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, it, it takes a lot of research and you go to the website and you're absolutely right. It's just the same kind of uh, jargon, um, which 
is almost a barrier to entry in many ways. Um, so yeah, you know, just tell us what it is, price protection, and then we can all just get on with it. Um, no, exactly. I, I think, yeah, I, I think that's great. Um, especially, you know, you talk about competition that without competition, you don't really innovate, do you? So it's always great yeah, to absolutely. bring out, the, exactly. You get a better yeah. product from innovation. Yeah. And it's, it certainly puts some tough, um, you know, because it, it kind of, it can affect deadlines and stuff because you are doing these almost like mini pivots um, to try to, you know, tackle something or something new has come come up or something else has been developed that you can maybe use, um, tack on to your to your protocol. So all those things really kind of push your, your timelines and budgets and all that kind of stuff. So it's about being very aware and, and, and constantly monitoring the market to see what's the best best decision so it's never just a straight straight line unfortunately it never is in any business in any industry i don't think it is but hey that's just the beauty of it i guess but gareth i want to thank you so much it's been such a pleasure speaking to you and um, wishing you the best of luck with further bumper developments yeah pleasure as well and thank you very much for having me bumper <laughs> <laughs>